The opening scene features a journalist and artist, Re, who visits an underground construction site somewhere in Denmark. In order to document the life of workers there, she takes an elevator and makes her way to the underground, where the construction of a metro is going on. While guiding her deeper into the tunnel, one of the workers hands her with a makeshift apparatus used for breathing under claustrophobic situations. He also mentally prepares her, in case something goes wrong inside the tunnel. Moving deeper, Re comes across a group of workers, with whom she shares some pastries and coffee while having a brief chit-chat. After this, she begins wandering around the site, taking pictures of the workers and asking them several questions regarding their job and families. She discovers that the workers are from all over the world, all speaking different languages and having different backgrounds. Despite these differences, she finds a commonality that all of them are away from their families and are longing to see them. This makes her feel bad, and she pities them for working in such conditions. Sometime later, Re comes across Evo, the man in charge of the project. He is currently fixing a leakage in the air pipe with his apprentice, Baran. She requests Evo to take her to the main drill so that she can see how things actually work. The latter agrees and leads her there, but he does not allow her to enter the cutter head behind the main compartment, citing its risk of minimal oxygen level. Despite this, Re convinces them by saying that she is authorized to go anywhere she wants. While in the chamber, she talks to the men and also takes their picture. As their conversation unfolds, Evo tells her that the engineers do their job with their computers and lasers, but they still rely on him to crawl into the cutter head under pressure and change the cutters with bare hands. Not long after, a crew member named Adrian shows up and argues with Evo for letting a journalist into the main chamber. He informs Re that there are only two oxygen tanks to circulate enough air in the chamber, so he pulls her out of there and locks their chamber from the outside before proceeding with an inspection process. However, he does allow her to watch the inspection process via camera and through the window. Adrian then pumps the oxygen inside while Evo and Baran wait for enough pressure to be built before entering the cutter head. Amidst this, Baran shows her a water bottle getting squeezed, which makes her realize that the pressure level inside the chamber is similar to being far under the ocean. As the pressure increases to its limit, Evo enters the cutter head and begins the inspection. He learns that the cutter number three is not working, so he uses a walkie-talkie to ask Adrian to arrange a new one. The latter reminds him it is only an inspection day and that it is not necessary to address the issue immediately. However, Evo insists on fixing the cutter because one way or another, it has to be fixed. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted when Adrian hears an alarm for carbon monoxide poisonous gas somewhere in the tunnel. Before he can comprehend the situation, he notices smoke filling the tunnel indicating a fire. He quickly instructs Re to rush to the refugee chamber, where she will be safe. However, she panics as she does not know the way and she is not familiar enough to navigate it on her own. Afraid that she might get lost, Adrian locks her into a medical chamber which is connected to the chamber Evo and Baran are in. He then turns on the oxygen and leaves. Shortly after, the chamber's lights suddenly go out for a while. When they come back on, she tries to look outside from a tiny window, but all she sees is pitch black darkness. In a state of panic, Re taps on another window and manages to catch Evo and Baran's attention. They ask how she ended up there, and she explains that Adrian put her in there to keep her safe, but now he is nowhere to be seen. The guys then ask her to remain calm, assuring her that help is on the way. Time passes by, and the chamber's temperature keeps on rising, probably due to the fire outside. This causes Re to sweat heavily, so she removes some layers of her clothing. However, the situation only gets tougher as the temperature surpasses 50 degrees. Unable to tolerate it, she knocks on the window and expresses her uneasiness. Evo then tells her to open the chamber's door and come to their compartment. Re tries doing so, but learns that the door has been jammed. She then looks around and spots a wooden log, which she uses to hit the wheel knob. This ultimately opens the door. Once the opening space is enough, they pull her out of the chamber and let her into theirs. Re finally experiences a sense of relief and chugs down an entire bottle of water, quenching her extreme thirst. But since she's removed those layers, the thirst of the others is far from quenched. After taking a moment to regain composure, she asks if they're going to die. Baran also appears 
appears to be scared, which makes the situation even more intense. However, Evo asks both of them to stay calm so that they consume less oxygen. Re questions why they are waiting here instead of doing something to make their way out. In response, Evo explains that the pressure outside the chamber is so high that opening the door could lead to an explosion and might deplete all of their oxygen. He also adds that there is a medical supply area outside, but it is too dangerous for any of them to go there, at least until the third act. Moreover, they are not even sure that the supplies are still there. As a result, the best thing they can do is wait. After a while, Reese phone rings and the men get excited, thinking that her phone has signal. However, it is actually an alarm to remind her to pick up her daughter from school. The three then begin to talk about their families, and Re shows them some photos and videos of her young daughter. Later, while everyone is sleeping, she comes up with an idea and tries sneaking back into the medical chamber. In the process, Evo wakes up, so she makes up a lie, saying she is just going to urinate. He then helps get into the chamber and even closes the door for her privacy. In an unexpected turn of events, Re tries to lock the door by putting back the wheel knob. It turns out that she was planning to lock Evo and Baran inside the main compartment and stay in the medical bay with her hidden supplies. However, her plan is thwarted as Evo quickly realizes what she's doing and opens the door hastily. The two guys then make their way into the medical chamber and find a breathing apparatus, which she had been hiding for this entire time. Enraged by her betrayal, Evo starts to fight for the breather when the lights suddenly suddenly go off again. By the time it restores, Evo has the breather in his hand, and he orders Baron to tie her up. Now that he is armed with the breathing apparatus, Evo decides to go out to the refugee chamber and get some supplies for all of them. During this, the three of them have a short debate on who should go out as they no longer trust each other. Baron claims that he needs to survive for his family because he owes them a lot of money. Despite this, Evo somehow manages to convince them, assuring that he will return for their rescue. As he prepares to open the chamber, a rescue team shows up outside, bringing great relief to the occupants. The team instructs them to decompress the chamber so that they can open the door from outside. Heeding to their instruction, Evo releases the gas pressure to make the chamber gas-free. While they wait, Re inquires why Baran owes money to his family, to which he reveals that he was kidnapped a few years ago, which forced his family to borrow a huge sum of money. His sad story touches her heart, so she promises to help him as soon as they make their way out. In the midst of the decompressing process, a massive explosion occurs outside the chamber, claiming the lives of all the rescuers. As a consequence, the temperature inside the chamber suddenly rises, and the things around them start to melt. This prompts the three occupants to rush back to the main compartment. When decompression starts taking its toll, they are forced to retreat further into the restricted cutter head, a small opening above the main compartment. Baron crawls out and helps but Evo passes inside the compartment. The two somehow manage to drag him out, but accidentally drop him from a height, resulting in his serious injuries. They then hurriedly climb down and try to wake Evo, but he eventually passes away. While Baron mourns his death, Re hears some sound and realizes that they are close to trains. Filled with a new sense of hope, she first shuts the door behind them to prevent any more heat and smoke from entering the cutter head, and then begins digging her way around the walls. She soon finds a hole, so she hurriedly asks Baron to let go of his friend's body and accompany her. Baron then crawls through the muddy hole, while Re retrieves her breathing apparatus from Evo before following him. Upon reaching the other side, Baron turns around to pull Re in. As they make their way forward, the two inadvertently fall into a pit and get engulfed by darkness. Re quickly takes out her phone and turns on the flashlight, only to find Baron unconscious. In a state of of panic, she takes the breathing apparatus and begins digging in random directions. She hopes to find an exit, but even after a lot of hard work, nothing appears. Distraught, Re then wakes Baron up and tells him that they need to hug each other to stay warm. Baron has no problem with this at all. After some time, they begin to struggle for breath due to very low oxygen levels. Re and Baron share the breathing apparatus, hoping they can survive until rescue arrives, but each time they pass it, their struggle intensifies which eventually leads to a desperate fight for the breather. In the end, Baron manages to keep the apparatus and Re passes out, but he doesn't get to use it for long as he too falls unconscious. A short while later, a light penetrates the darkness and they are found by the rescue team. The scene then cuts forward to Baron, who wakes up on a medical
medical plane with an oxygen mask on his face. He looks around and finds Re on the other side, lying down and breathing with a tube in her mouth. He initially believes that she is dead, but his assumption turns out to be wrong as she soon regains her consciousness. The movie ends as the two of them stare at each other and the camera pans out. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.